Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so um, yesterday I go to this church here in Newton, Iowa. I just kind of, it was like a spur of the moment kind of thing. I was just in the area and I uh, had some time. I thought I would just stop in there and see, you know, I see I seen some vehicles in the parking lot. And so I thought, why not? Why not drive up in there and see if there's anybody that's willing to talk to me? You know? I just thought, why not? That's all. All right, and you can see it from the road here. <clears throat> it's a quite impressive place. All right. So I went through this door here. They got their office there, and I went in and I spoke with the lead pastor, I guess. His name is Jeff, and he's a super nice guy. Super nice guy. He talked with me for a couple hours, and he even showed me around. Uh, this place is very, very impressive. I'm not sure if I could show you some pictures of the inside, but it is... Uh, I was very impressed with... Uh, how big that place is and how uh, organized and <clears throat> how neat it is. All right, so uh, the reason I wanted to talk with him, I guess, uh, you know, this is the biggest church in this area. Uh, I thought it they had a, a thousand people that would show up on Sunday. He told me it's only four to five hundred people. Uh, which is interesting because I, I was there in 2000 I think it was 2010 give or take and uh, there was a lot of people there and I, I was told there was a thousand people but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um, but the reason I guess there's a couple things I want to talk about one is when I met with this gentleman I wanted to ask him why should I believe in Jesus? And uh, to make to make it uh, short, he basically said, "When you believe in Jesus, you'll have a better life." And well, that that might be true. I'm not going to dispute that. I'm not going to argue that at all. Uh, but I'm still going to die. Okay, and that's what I told him. I'm still gonna die. I have a have. I could have the best life ever. <laughs> I'm still gonna die. So why? What, what, what's the point? It's it's vain. If that's all that is, and of course that's not why I believe in Jesus. <laughs> if that was the reason, I wouldn't believe at all. And, but that's what I wanted to talk about, because I think this is a, extremely important. I mean, it's, I, I don't know how it, anything could be more important. Because if I'm believing in Jesus, imagine this scenario. I believe in Jesus because when I die, he's going to give me my own planet full of virgins. And I'm going to have my way with them. Well, that ain't right. That ain't right at all. I mean, so, is that person saved? If they, if that's what they're putting their hope into? I don't know how they could be. And, so, what we're putting our hope into matters. Why? Why believe in Jesus? And for me, just having a better life now is not, it's not, it's no good. This life is full of misery. This life is full of pain, sorrow, and death. No better it doesn't take away the pain, sorrow, and death. 
So the reason I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is, is because I want eternal life, where there is no pain, sorrow, and death. I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because I have hope for a better life beyond the life that I'm living now. And I'm going to continue to go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Because I'm not sure that people quite understand. Uh, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. For. See, I'm putting my hope into eternal life. I'm not putting my hope into a better life now. I'm not putting my hope into a planet full of virgins. I'm putting my hope into eternal life where there is no pain, sorrow, and death. All right. And uh, that's incredibly important incredibly important and I just wonder if the preachers today are even preaching that are they preaching everlasting life are they preaching the life to come hereafter and it's interesting to me you know back in 1997 I went to a church on a Thursday and they talked about going to heaven and you hear this all the time, going to heaven. Well, when, when I die, I'm going up to the spirit in the sky. Spirit in the sky, that's where I'm going to go when I die. All right, well, that's great. And that's kind of true. Because when Jesus comes, we are lifted up out of this world, and this world is destroyed. And, but then we're set back down on a new earth with new heavens. And as of right now, there's only been one that has ascended to heaven, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And just in case, I like to always provide proof of things that I say. Okay, so just um, take a look at this. All right, consider this, not that. Consider not that. Consider this. Verse 34, Acts chapter 2. For David is not ascended into the heavens. David hasn't even ascended to heaven. So you think, what? He d doesn't go, but one of your loved ones goes? Or that you're going to go and before him? Uh, is that what you think? John chapter 3, Jesus says, No man has, ex has ascended to heaven. Excuse me. No man has ascended up to heaven. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. So, but you think either uh, there's an exception there and that you're going to be going to heaven when you die? Or uh, Jesus lied? Or maybe you are the Son of Man which is in heaven. Maybe you're the Christ. I mean, that's really your only options. Uh, again, the reality is, here, in case you don't know, in case you don't know, so the reality is that it is appointed unto man once to die and then after this the judgment. So, the judgment happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. So when he comes, that's when we are resurrected from the grave. All right. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. We read that in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. All right. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. For as in Adam all die, 
even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Oh, you think you can somehow get around that? Think you found a loophole? Well, let's start talking about it then. Let's. I want to hear your loophole. And you either got to say this is wrong, that God is wrong, that God didn't have any understanding, or you know that the other option is that you're wrong <laughs> and you don't have any understanding. Really, um, uh, let's do it this way. It's interesting. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So are you going to say that God has no understanding? Because this is the word of God. God. This is from God. And God says, As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order. And you think that, well, God didn't understand it right. right the thing that framed it didn't understand? The, fr the thing that framed you doesn't understand? That's the, your only option. Either that or you're wrong to say anything contrary to this. No man has ascended to heaven except the Son of Man which is in heaven. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Christ the first fruits. Jesus has, he's the first begotten of the dead. Right, he's the first resurrection, the first fruits of them that slept. Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So nobody has resurrected and ascended to heaven except for the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. If you're preaching a doctrine that is contrary to that, You're on the wrong side of the fence. You're on the wrong side of the fence because you're going against the Word of God. You're going against God. You're in a battle and a struggle and a fight with the Lord God Almighty. And you're not going to win. All right. All right. So, um, to me, uh, again, this is very important. What are we putting our hope into? Right, we're putting, I'm putting my hope, I shouldn't say we, I'm not sure if anybody shares my view. I'm putting my hope into eternal life. All right, now uh, let's move on to another subject. Here, I want to talk about okay, this fellow right here. Let's start with this one. I forget what he says, so let's listen. Walked according to the course of the, this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and even now is working in the children of disobedience, among whom you all once had your manner of living. He said, you, when you look at back, when you're, we call him as a non Christian, a non believer, we all walk towards that way. And he says, but we are listening, following. You know, who, who were you following? The prince of power of this era, the, otherwise the devil himself. But he's called Satan. We know, of course, the prince of this world. Jesus referred to him as such as the prince of this world. Alright, so, 
Oh, I should probably, let me just, now that now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged, and so on and so forth. I'm trying to, um, trying to support uh, his point right there. Satan is in control of this world. Oh, now he just lost me. <laughs> I can't support that. Satan is in control of this world. It, it, it belongs to him. I can't support that either. Can't support that one either. When Jesus came, he came to redeem this world. I can't even support that. This world is lost. He didn't come to redeem this world. He came to redeem us that are in the world and to deliver us out of this world this world is no good all right so uh let's go back of course the prince of this world jesus referred to him as such as the prince of this world satan is in control of this world and that let's see that's not true uh that's not true at all Oh, you have to forgive me. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a good verse. God of the earth is that, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth. Oh, is that Satan? No. No, it can't be. Let's see. The Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth. Now, what did he say? We know, of course, the prince of this world. Jesus referred to him as such as the prince of this world. Satan is in control of this world. It, it, it belongs to him. And it belongs to him. And it belongs to Satan. Exodus 19. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all of the earth is mine. Who said that? Satan? Well, if you're not saved, then you might view the Lord God Almighty as Satan. Right? But this is essentially an admission that you don't believe the Lord God Almighty. You believe Satan has control over this world and you're a part of this world it's like you're politicizing trying to politic this idea in order to transform it into reality but it's not gonna work okay All right, I just want to point that out you can't get around this stuff Satan is not a god no matter how often you say it, no matter how many different ways you preach it, it'll never make Satan a god. Now he, he you might say, "Well, he's my god," All right, but he's not a he's not a real god. He's not a real god. There's only one real god. That's it. There ain't multiple gods. I mean, you should have known that. I mean, if you really are born of God, you really don't have any excuse. Exodus 20, the very first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But then when you go to stand up behind a pulpit in front of the people of God, in front of a large congregation of believers, you're going to proclaim in front of everybody 
that Satan is God of this world and that Satan controls this world yet Exodus 20 verse 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me so in your view you got Satan on one shoulder and you got God on the other shoulder that's two gods I know that's what a lot of people believe You got Satan, and you got God. Two gods. Yet, when you read the Word of God, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God, and it's not Satan. All right. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. I'm probably butchering that terribly. Thou believe one God thou do well let's see how close I am thou believest that there is one God thou do doest well the devils also believe and tremble the devils know that Satan is not a God they know it and they tremble because they know there's only one God Yet you are going to stand behind the pulpit in front of God and everybody and proclaim that Satan is God of this world? It's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, we are living in bizarre times. We really are. It's, it's crazy. Now, of course, uh, the verse in, in question is... Uh, Somewhere in the Bible. I'm not. I, is it right here? It is. No? Yeah. No. Oh, goodness gracious. I got to think now. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember nothing. Boom. Let's see here. Oh, it's way off. Way off. Not even close. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Just from reading that one single verse, if that's all you had, you should you have enough to understand that the God of this world is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God has blinded your mind lest you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. You should know that. Somehow, Somebody got them to change this to a little g, and it doesn't mean anything. I don't know why they did that. It doesn't matter. Whether it's a little g or a capital G, it doesn't change the meaning. It doesn't all of a sudden mean the opposite. There's one God, so the God of this world has to be that one God, the Lord God Almighty. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's God. There's one God. This doesn't all of a sudden change the entire Bible. I think people have lost their minds. It doesn't change the meaning at all. Let's go. It's interesting to me because I've heard people <clears throat> preach from the. Uh, wait a second. What am I? Where am I at? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't mind here. Second Corinthians 4. You notice here. 
in the King James. It's interesting because I noticed people preaching from the King James uh, just the other day in particular. And, and the guy even had a 1611 King James Bible, which is great. It is. It's fantastic. I don't even have one myself, but I know what it says. Right? Now I can show you what it says. And you're looking at it. I mean, if that if that means so much to you, and it shouldn't, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. What do I have to do here? Let's do. Can I do it this way? So I want you to see it. I want you to put your eyeballs on it. Oh, where am I at? Oh, that's chapter 5. Dog biscuit. Oh, goodness gracious. Where are we at? There's. Is that 6? I want 4. Where's 4? There we go. Let's open that sucker up. I want you to put your eyeballs right on that word. If that's going to help you to understand. If it's going to help, I want to help. Right here in First Corinthians or Second Corinthians, somewhere in the Bible, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four, in whom the God is that supposed to be capital G or small G? For God, right there in verse six, for God. God, it looks like the same to me. Interesting that the gospel also um, here, let's go back. I'm doing a little study today, okay? Let's go back. Let's go, there's those go gospel. All right, so let's go here. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid from to them that are lost. Well, you you notice here that the gospel. Well, that should be capitalized because that's the gospel of God. But then when you go to when it's not capitalized, well, then that means Satan. If you're going to be consistent with this ridiculousness, if you're going to be consistently ridiculous, you might as well go all out. What is that verse in the Bible? Uh, whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Something to that effect. I can't remember now. I'm going to have to go back to that one. Uh, anyways, uh, this doesn't change nothing, man. It, just because this isn't capitalized, that don't change nothing. Whether it's capitalized or not capitalized. You can say the proper way. proper In a proper form, it should be capitalized. So also with this word. It doesn't change the definition of a word. You know, if you have a, a dog or a capital D dog... It doesn't change the meaning of the word dog. Whether you have a cat, small c cat, or a capital C cat, a cat is still a cat. They don't change what a cat is. I think pe people have lost their minds. Desperately wanting to believe in Satan? Is that it? I mean, you want to ignore all the other scripture that is consistent with what we're reading here in 2 Corinthians 4? Because there's a lot. Now, this is not a standalone verse. Are you crazy? You don't know what the Bible says? Wow. Isaiah 6, verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. All right. 
let's let's try another way that maybe if I get the right words here we can see it no no of course not um, see heart heal maybe yeah there we go that's better isn't it yeah oh there that's it that's that's it right there try to remember that see heart heal you want to see your heart heal all right like I said Isaiah 6 and then again in Matthew 13 for this people's heart is waxed gross their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them notice the slight little difference and why is that because it's the Lord Jesus Christ he's the one that will heal them the mystery is revealed that the Lord Jesus Christ is God Almighty he's the one that blinds the minds of them that believe not he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them for the heart of those people's wax grows and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them alright all right, so here, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's God, that's Jesus Christ, there is no other God. Come on. Now let's look at, uh, what is that? Um, Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart, and nevertheless when it should turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. This is the previous chapter. This is Second Corinthians 4. Let's go to the previous chapter, 2 Corinthians 3. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Let's see. And this goes all into that. And is, there's no mention or no suggestion at all that Satan, he's, he's the one that puts the veil over Moses's face he's the one that told Moses to put the veil over his face. I mean it's there's nothing that you can draw from this to suggest say oh it's Satan well Satan's never mentioned never mentioned it, it you think if God, if if Satan was God of this world, well, it should be sprinkled all over. At least mentioned once, and not even a single time. And really, I wonder if these guys have ever read the Bible. Honest to God, I'll show you. Let's see, here in Exodus, I'm not sure if any of you have ever read the book of Ex Exodus, but the Lord God hardens Pharaoh's heart. It's not Satan, it's the Lord God Almighty. He hardens the heart of Pharaoh. He's the one that blinds the minds of them that believe not. He's in control of this world, not Satan. Um, I think people are out of their cotton-picking minds, really. It, I mean, what, you've never read this? I mean, this is not, I don't know how you miss it, man. Honest to God, I, how do you miss this? Oh, I forgot about that. What, you never read it? And now you're going to turn to 2 Corinthians 4 and say, oh, this is Satan. Well, you might take advantage of people that never read the Bible. 
But at the same time, you're exposing yourself as somebody that's never read the Bible. Really? I know, I know where you're getting it from. You're getting it because you heard another preacher. You heard somebody else say it. All right, just like that gentleman yesterday that I spoke with. I told him that I believe the Bible that I hold in my hands, I believe it's from God. And he's like, oh, where'd you get that from? No, you got it from somebody. No, I said, look at it. I've read and studied. And I explained to him, I, I've uh, started off uh, reading all different versions of the Bible, and I was under the impression that there was this perfect Bible in another language that all these other all these English translations were based on that one perfect Bible and then after realizing that hey this English translation this has a problem here there's a contradiction this can't be right and then going to another one and saying well this one can't be right and then turning to the King James and this oh this is right this is good this is good and then discovering that there actually is no perfect Bible in the Greek or the Hebrew. I was lied to. I was lied to because it does not exist. It doesn't exist. So that required me to do more study. And you think about this, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even to the asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it's not just <laughs> words on a piece of paper, man. It's not an old Harry Potter book. It's the Spirit of God is in these words. These are the words of God. These are God. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. This is, this is God. This is the Word of God. You read. Have you ever read John chapter 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Did you catch that? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that and the light shines in darkness, and the, dar and the darkness comprehends it not. Now, and again, in the book of Revelation, we read... Uh, how, how do I find this? Uh, oh, let me just real quickly while I'm typing this out. Let me uh, reemphasize, just because this is capital, it doesn't change the meaning. It doesn't, that doesn't change. Just because that's capital, it still has the same meaning. It, it, I don't know how, if you're, if you speak a foreign language, if a, if a foreign language is your native tongue, and English is not your native tongue, I don't know how they do things in your native tongue, but in an English language, the capital alone, the capital W alone, does not change whether it's capital W, capital G, no matter what the capital, doesn't change the meaning of the word. Not, uh, not alone. Not all by itself. Does not change the meaning of the word. It never does. You can't give me one example. It never happens. Alright, so in the book of Revelation, we hear in the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. That's what his name is called. The word of God. The word of God. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
right? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even the center of soul and spirit. Are you kidding me? You can't figure this stuff out? Well, if you can't figure it out, maybe there's a veil upon your heart because you don't believe the word of God. Maybe it's time to start believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. But without that faith, you're not going to understand. The key to understanding the Bible is faith. It's, the key isn't, it's never been, well, when you're a 19-year-old snot-nosed little brat and you go to college seminary school, then you'll have better understanding than anybody else on the planet Earth forever and ever and ever. No, you, you can't show me that in the Bible because it's not there and, I, and you'll never preach it because the idea is ridiculous. But you'll flaunt, won't you? You'll flaunt around and you'll show off your titles and you'll call yourself high and mighty. And you'll pump out your chest and you'll pretend like you're an expert, won't you? You know more than anybody else because when you were a snot-nosed little brat, you went to seminary school. Won't you? It's as if the only time in your life that you can truly understand anything is when you're when you got snot running out of your nose because once you're an adult if you don't start reading the Bible if you don't never go to seminary school you will never understand you'll never understand as much as this 19 year old snot nose brat because you didn't go to seminary school he understands better than you because you're an old man when you started reading the Bible believing it and they, it's ridiculous it really is. It's ridiculous that people will pretend like they are experts. Oh, I'm an expert. Or uh, an easy cop-out is to say, well, this guy's an expert, and this guy says this and that. Well, <laughs> that's great. But God, who writes the Bible, says this. It's incredible, man. It's incredible, and, and the you see these these contradictions all the time, all the time. So here in John chapter one, the word is God, right? And uh, so, I, where was I going with this? I'm not sure. Oh, this guy here is saying that Satan is God. I don't know if there's more I need to add to this, right? Right? Uh, so, you know, against in whom the God of this doesn't change, right? In John chapter 1, doesn't change. Whether it's capital G or small g. Now there is a proper way, there is a proper way to write, you know, whether there's a comma there or not, it shouldn't matter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That comma should be there, but if it wasn't there, it wouldn't change. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There is a proper way that things need to be done, uh, just in case. Uh, just to clarify, to make things easier to read and understand, there are there is proper ways to do things, no question about it. But never, ever does a capital alone change the definition of board. Not all by itself. Okay. Now, you can come up with example uh, with, uh, for example words leading up to uh, you know up to this you know word that's capitalized right and then you could say uh, in the context you know it in the context uh, without the capital I, I'd be curious to see what that sentence would say where it would, would change 
where if it was a small, not capitalized, um, somebody very clever could do this. If it was not capitalized, it would mean an object, but because it's capitalized, it means uh, a different kind of object. Uh, yeah, I can't think of any example off the top of my head, but uh, somebody might, somebody real clever might be able to do that. Uh, but uh, again, the point stands that all by itself, this doesn't mean you know a dog. You know, <laughs> the dog and the cat is a perfect example. Whether you capitalize it or not, it doesn't change the fact that a dog is a dog and a cat is a cat, and the word is the word. Jesus is the Word of God. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus is the life. Right? Jesus says the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture says not a bone of him will be broken. And the scripture says Jesus is the Word of God. Right? So anyways, I can go on and on and on. Guys, I mean, really, making way too big of a deal out of that thing that's not capitalized in your Bible, but it is capitalized in the 1611 King James Bible. I mean, if it really means that much to you, look at the 1611. It's capitalized. All right, now at least accept that you got a problem. At least recognize that you got a problem and you ought to deal with it all right all right so uh, was there something else I wanted to go over I just wanted to ramble today that's all I want okay again here we go to Revelation 20 and we look at all these new videos that popped up in the last 24 hours and every single one of them got it wrong they're all preaching this fantasy of a thousand bonus years of unadulterated sex that's what they're preaching and, <laughs> and it, I, I don't know how people aren't seeing it I don't know how people are seeing are not seeing it let's see uh, yeah, I'd be curious to show me one person that gets this right Alright, to say the thousand years is fair. Alright. To say the thousand years in Revelation 20, that's fair. Alright. Alright, now to say the thousand year reign, that's not in Revelation 20. Alright, and so this goes back to what I said in the beginning. Why are you believing in the Lord Jesus? Why? Why do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it so that you can have this bonus thousand years of unadulterated sex? Now you notice here in Revelation 20, verse 4, verse 6, and no matter where you look, you're not going to find it anywhere that says a thousand year reign. We don't reign for a thousand years Christ don't reign a thousand years we reign with Christ during this thousand years Christ reigns forever Jesus reigns forever and we reign with him during this thousand years and then forever and ever at the end of the thousand years is the end of the world. This is consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. At the end of the thousand years, it's the end of the world. All right, we are partakers of his resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection. All right, we are partakers of his resurrection. And the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. At the end of the thousand years is when we are resurrected. Okay. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. And afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. 
right? So Jesus is the first resurrection. And I mean, you can't get around it. You cannot get around it. In John chapter 11, Jesus even says himself as plain as day. It could not get any clearer. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. You can't figure out who the resurrection is. Nah, the first resurrection, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are partakers of his resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over those of us that are born of God. Right now we are kings and priests of God. We read that in Revelation 1. He has made us kings and priests unto God. In Exodus 19, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a peculiar treasure above all people. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, you are, ye are a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people we are called to preach the gospel to every creature we are priests of god in christ right now and we reign with him right now for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet right so jesus christ reigns and then he and i'm sorry and, and then he comes in the clouds of heaven and then we are lifted up out of the earth right and then our enemy is gathered at our feet the Satan gathers them to gather them together at our feet and they compass the camp of the Saints the camp of the Saints and the beloved city is above we even read that in Revelation 21 how the city of, city of God the New Jerusalem comes down from heaven you just you read that in Revelation 21 and people make a big deal out of oh well back in the day they didn't have chapters which is a bunch of BS if you ask me Um, because the only reason they teach that is because they want to say, well, if you go to Revelation 19, and then because it stops there and then goes to another chapter, well, it completely changes everything, and it shouldn't be there because it destroys my doctrine that this is a continuation of, re of uh, chapter 19. All right? If you're being honest. All right? But then they'll ignore Revelation 21. In Revelation 21, it says, New Jerusalem comes down from God out of heaven. We go to Revelation 20, and it says they gathered, are gathered, uh, they are gathered, or compassed, or they compass the camp of the saints about the beloved city. The beloved city is in heaven. The beloved city is in heaven, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them that are not of God. This is consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And the Lord said to the serpent, uh, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. In Psalm 19, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. In Acts chapter 2, until I make thy foes thy footstool. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. See, our enemy is going to come at our feet. 
Revelation 20, that our enemy is gathered at our feet. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. They compass us at our feet. We are up in the air with God. John chapter 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are with him. That where I am, there ye may be also. We're with God when fire comes down out of heaven. We're with God. Oh, you thought you were on the earth? Who told you that? The devil? Come on, man. This is not rocket science. What is happening is people are listening and trusting what another man says and ignoring the word of God, not trusting the word of God. And I think, doggone it, man, I, sh I saw this 10 years ago. I should have seen it clear. But yeah, I, I get it. It takes time to see this stuff. It takes time. Let God be true. Let God be true. Let God be true. You know, there's one verse. I'm going to end it on this one verse. Prove all things and hold fast that which is is good now remember all right remember 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 you can know the truth remember that you can know the truth the truth is not subjective if this and uh, let's see, I kind of wanted to go one more verse here, and you shall know the truth, and ye shall know the truth. Jesus says, "Ye shall know the truth. The truth is not unknowable. The truth is not unknowable. You can know the truth, right? You absolutely." can know the truth you can know the truth remember that no you can know the truth you can know the truth for everyone that asks receives oh, wait, let's go back up here I like this ask God and it shall be given to you ask God for the truth say I want to know the truth about this God will show it to you guarantee it that's what jesus says if if not god's a liar ask and it shall be given you seek if you seek it you shall find it otherwise god's a liar knock and it shall be open to you if it's not open to you god is a liar or you're a liar because you don't believe it all right for everyone that asks receives and he that seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be open now that's 100% the truth. 100%. I know it for a fact. If you want to know what the truth is, it's right there. In the Word of God. Right? And God will reveal it to you. You have to believe. You have to. And then, of course, you got to ask, seek it, knock, look, see and it'll be revealed to you. All right. All you need to do is believe and look. Believe and look. The truth is simple.